Hey y'all, this is BG Codes and I am Brad Garropy. In my last video, I talked about basic front-end developer skills that everyone would need to get hired for their first job. But now in this video, I want to take that idea and go one step further. I want to talk about advanced front-end developer skills or maybe senior level front-end developer skills that you need to get promoted and progress through your career. Let's go back to the same Excaladraw I had before. And you can see I added a bunch of new stuff in red to talk about these advanced skills that you'll need to continue to level up. So, starting at the very beginning, obviously you still have to be strong in the web platform, but now let's layer some things on top of it. So in addition to be able to use like HTTP requests and responses, we need to be able to authenticate those requests, understand how those headers work, uh, things like bearer tokens, JWTs, you also need to understand how performance works here. Uh, caching is a big thing. Are you caching on the server? Are you caching on the client? What other caches can you use like CDNs? Uh, and then finally, you need to understand web vitals, talking about how fast your web page loads and what's actually affecting that. Is it a server-side issue? Is it issues doing multiple waterfall requests on the client? It all depends. Moving forward here, HTML pretty much stays the same. You need to be really strong there, but accessibility is probably like a new topic that you need to really take control of and understand. You gotta understand the semantics of the elements, uh, what things like ARIA labels and ARIA descriptions are used for, uh, maybe even the importance of like IDs and names on form inputs, things like that. Continuing on CSS, you'll need to be really comfortable with more advanced CSS layouts like leveraging flex and grid and understanding the difference between them when you would choose them. Also, if you could talk and understand about like new CSS features like the has pseudo selector, that would be awesome for you to, to be able to explain in your interviews or use as a technique in the code. And then you really need to have a good grasp on all sorts of different CSS methodologies. Like for instance, Tailwind and this whole utility class craze that's going on right now. You got to understand uh, why that works well, what are the benefits there, and then kind of what are the drawbacks as well. And be able to compare that maybe to like an older style of doing things like BEM, block element modifier naming schemes. And then at this point, if you're becoming more advanced in front end, you're really going to have to understand uh, the cascade in CSS and truly what that means and how it affects. Uh, elements downstream, as well as the way CSS scoping works and maybe how you can solve the scoping problem if you're working in a modern front-end framework that uses components and maybe you only want that CSS to be scoped for that component. Okay, moving on to JavaScript. All pretty much the same, but at this point now you kind of really need to be more comfortable with how you deliver JavaScript. Um, how is it built? How is it turned from TypeScript files into JavaScript files? How is it transpiled? Um, how is it loaded on the page? Uh, are they inline script tags? Are they network requests to grab these scripts? And how does bundling JavaScript affect performance? At this point, you should also be pretty concerned about browser compatibility. Is the JavaScript that you're shipping compatible with all browsers that your users are using? Or are your users maybe developers that are all working on modern browsers so you can ship the latest and greatest features without changing anything. And then speaking of latest and greatest features, like if you can talk about or leverage these new features like the array at method or the uh, object group by method, really helpful for just improving your workflows. Git is still a core concept, uh, but you just kind of need to be more advanced at using it. Uh, git stash is a really cool command that if I heard you talk about, I think, wow, you have some good experience. Uh, the GitHub CLI, if you use GitHub for your version control, again, just a really awesome tool to use. And then you should probably understand how uh, git tags work and how they relate to branches and the release process. Now, React is something where you can really go deep on. If you're a front-end developer, you need to understand your primary tool uh, through and through. So with React, they just came out with like a version 19 release candidate. And if you can kind of talk about the new features there and why they're useful, 
it'll show me that you know your primary tool through and through. Things like the new actions, like React Suspense, and then all the fancy hooks that can be used to interact with actions like use optimistic, use action state, use form status. Uh, this will just like eliminate a ton of boilerplate code in your React apps. It'd be also really cool if you knew about the React compiler that's coming out and how that can actually optimize your code for you and eliminate the use of the use memo and use callback hooks that you were probably using incorrectly in the first place. They were pretty complicated to understand. Uh, and then down here at the bottom here, hydration errors. If you're doing server-side rendering versus client-side rendering and rehydrating, uh, you got to understand what a hydration error means and how to be able to, you know, trace those down and solve those problems. Okay, now moving into testing. Uh, as a senior developer, I would expect that you have just more experience writing tests and writing complicated tests as well in complicated systems. So being able to mock things, especially like partial mocking, like I want to import a module but only mock one of the named exports instead of the whole thing. How would you do that? Um, you should have a strong grasp on how you should mock APIs or how you should mock network requests and what tools you would use for doing that. And then, of course, the uh, assertions you write in tests are very important. And you can actually get pretty advanced with assertions. So assertions around promises, objects, arrays, you don't necessarily have to just say it equals this particular object or array. You can get really fine grained and say, I expect it to be some object with a particular property, but I don't care about the rest. Um, getting these more advanced assertions down can really make your tests super succinct if you want to do fine grain unit testing. Okay, now moving into the more advanced things here. Uh, TypeScript, while it's kind of optional for the, you know, entry level front end developer, I would say it's a must for a senior level front end developer. Um, besides understanding the basics of TypeScript, you definitely need to understand the TS config file and be able to set one up and know what all the options mean. You need to be able to understand what type inference is and why writing static types all the time isn't necessarily the best. Uh, like leveraging inference can be a powerful tool in your code base. You need to understand type casting and why that could be considered bad practice and be able to explain it to me. And then uh, understand what type declaration files are, the ones that usually end in .d, .ts, how they're used, what they're for, both in the context of an application and in the context of a library published on NPM. And then, of course, globals, how to set global types, like modifying the window object or something like that. Now, here are two completely new sections here. So as you get more advanced in the front end, you should understand the back end. So you should be able to write a REST API or a GraphQL API. You may or may not have experimented with other backend languages. Um, you are kind of in tune with how to design an API. Like a lot of people do REST APIs incorrectly. So you need to understand what a REST API is and how to design one. Same thing with a GraphQL API. And then uh, you need to understand the complexities of backend infrastructure. So whether that be serverless infrastructure or hosting on a uh, dedicated server, you need to understand how queues work in the serverless world, background tasks, crons, maybe how to store things. This could be a database. This could be blob storage. Um, so the back end can go really deep. But if you can kind of show me that you're stepping into the, that territory, then you're showing me that you're kind of growing as a front end developer because you're understanding the technologies that the front end touches. Now, regardless of backend, it's really helpful to understand databases. Uh, more often now than ever, we actually have the ability in our front end code to run database queries to hit some kind of serverless database, or our front end frameworks are now running on the server and they're actually hitting databases. So you kind of have to understand the difference between relational databases and non relational databases. Maybe talk about the differences between Postgres, MySQL, Mongo, things like that. Then you kind of need to be able to talk about uh, the database limitations, especially in the serverless world. You need to talk about 
where those databases are hosted versus where the users are accessing your website and how if they're not in the same region in the world, it could introduce a lot of latency. Uh, you need to understand ORMs, like how you actually access that database and do uh, transactions there. And then it'd be really cool if you knew about uh, database migrations when you're maybe changing a column name or adding a new table. And then how all this data works together with one another by talking about foreign keys. And of course, the deeper you go on databases, performance is a huge thing. You know, if you know about indexing or creating database indexes to increase performance, really, really good depth of knowledge you can share. Now, these last couple here are more about kind of community leadership involvement. So it mostly stays the same. But in your portfolio, I kind of want to see a little bit more of like you sharing your knowledge, giving talks, giving presentations, explaining things. You can explain something if you can go in depth into something. I know you truly understand it. In the community aspect, uh, it'd be really cool, like above and beyond, if you've ever like contributed to open source or published a package or created an RFC or a proposal and are active in the open source community. That's really cool because so much work in the JavaScript ecosystem and the front end ecosystem really gets done as open source. And finally, when you're moving into a senior level role, I think this is absolutely critical. You need to be able to demonstrate leadership in one way or the other. Um, are you mentoring junior developers? Are you doing code reviews? Are you managing projects and establishing timelines and giving estimates? Um, Another way you could manage is just by straight up, you know, delegating tasks to other people or knowing how to break down a problem and delegate tasks to other engineers. So this leadership category, I think, is really the pinnacle of what defines kind of a senior level engineer. And this is what you should really be striving towards, because I think hiring managers want to know that, yes, you possess all the technical knowledge that you need. And you're coupling that with leadership ability and uh, the ability to collaborate with different kinds of engineers, different kind of like product managers, leads, things like that. So I hope this helps. Now you have the backend skill, the sorry, the basic skills that you need and the more advanced skills that you need to continue leveling up your career. Thanks for watching. This has been BG Codes, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.